Hi everyone, glad you could join me again whilst we look at how the earth went from a giant ball of lava to a giant ball of ice. The Proterozoic. It was neon in Earth's history and the last eon to exist within the Precambrian. It started following the end of the Archean 2.5 billion years ago and lasted roughly 1.9 billion years. Now when we last left off, the first forms of life were in a bit of a spot of bother since they filled the atmosphere with lots and lots of oxygen, which for a photosynthesizing organism is bad news. The abundant stores of sulphur and iron were full up and saturated, meaning the oxygen was now spilling into the air a process that you can find out more about here. This led to the Great Oxygenation event. Clues in the title. Now the biggest thing to have happened as a result of this was the evolution of life that was able to actually live from that oxygen. But we're not quite too sure what point in time this would have happened. Now like I said in previous videos, the resolution of what we can actually read in the rock record gets more and more hazy the further back we go. What we do know is, is that this is where eukaryotes entered the ring. But we will get into that in just a sec. No peeking. The continents of Earth constantly shifting around on a big spherical conveyor belt, and the points at which the crust goes under is known as a subduction zone. So much so that cratons, which is another term for terrestrial land, that had first begun uplifting during the Archean, was now forming continents with the first known supercontinent, Rodinia. Now the formation of this supercontinent would have had drastic effects on the atmosphere, acting as a kind of barrier to some of that thermal circulation that was going on within the oceans. This kind of tectonic movement would have also pushed continental crust to much higher altitudes, which likely contributed to what is hypothesized as being the biggest glacial event in Earth's history. Meanwhile, those eukaryotes were making strides. A eukaryote refers to an organism whose cells are more complex than prokaryotes in that they have a nucleus. Now these eukaryotes evolved to do things a little bit differently, mainly by using the oxygen that was newly free throughout the atmosphere to live on and also decided to reproduce in a new and radical way. The only form of reproduction before this was mitosis, which is when a cell uses division to clone itself. Certain eukaryotes started to experiment with a new form of reproduction, which is known as meiosis, which is a form of reproduction that they clearly found more fun. The main benefit that meiosis has over mitosis is that evolutionary changes happen much, much quicker since rather than creating an exact copy, the offspring cell will have features of both parent cells, making a more original organism. This is the point where it is hypothesized that fungi originated, as well as other forms of multicellular life. This means that 750 million years ago, we had the first forms of animals and plants. But then things finally start to calm down and stabilize once again. So much so in fact, that the stability of the atmosphere and the slowing down of tectonic plates, as well as the moderate speed at which life was evolving at, has caused a lot of geologists to nickname this point in time the Boring Billion. Things were about to shake up again though, as around 720 million years ago, the Cryogenian began. Or, as it's more commonly referred to as, Snowball Earth. As the name suggests, Earth was so heavily glaciated that it actually resembled a giant snowball. Now even though this glaciation lasted around 70 million years, no scientist can actually agree as to what caused it, and thus far remains a cold case. I promise I'm going to leave the house soon. After this, the Proterozoic closed on what would be its last period, the Ediacaran. The Ediacaran is when we first started to see really abundant fossils due to a rapid radiation. Life certainly wasn't evolving in the slow lane anymore. Moreover, the animals that were evolving at this time were really weird. 
so weird that most Idiocare and Fauna are grouped as Problematica. Basically, we have no idea what the hell these things are. This sudden abundance and diversity in life was just the beginning, though. Come the end of the Proterozoic, things would bump up the gear again. But that is for next time.